So here we have a, an old Toshiba satellite, and it is, I believe, 650. What's the model here? It is, yeah, 650D007. It's an old spinning disc, and it functions. It runs actually pretty well with Windows 7. But what we're going to do is put a solid state drive in, namely the uh, the uh, 870 Evo. This is uh, $50 Canadian. Uh, so, well, but. $40 US and um, yeah but then we're going to install Windows 10 on it from scratch uh, fully properly licensed version uh, which we'll show you how to get for free and uh, we're on our way so yeah so I've just uh, taken the screw out of the back here it's easy just use a small screwdriver and then uh, take the door off as I've just done and now let's see what we have to do to get this out looks like there's a screw here and there well that's it looks like there's a screw here so I'm just going to take this out There it is, it's, and then slide it, yep, that's pretty expected, and then let's just lift this out, there we go. Now I need to take the, um, let's get rid of this for a moment, to make this work with the new one I need to get these little screws out of the holder, and so let's see here, the screws are different, as you can see here, that's a screw out of here, that's a screw that was holding it down at the back. So I'm going to keep that separate so I don't screw them up. Pun intended. Okay. Uh, the only thing really to note is where the uh, SATA ports are. The SATA port and the power port are. So it's pretty obvious that they're, <laughs> well, that they're there. So you can take the old disc and you could put it into an external chassis if you want or you could just throw it out. Whatever you want to do. So I'm going to take this brand new 870. Uh, don't care about the packaging. I'm not going to read the manual. Don't care about the packaging. I'm going to jam that in. There it is. It's not the right way. There, that's the way it has to go. And I'm just going to screw this down again. Put this down and uh, put it down and slide it back. There it is. It's connected. Put this little screw back in, which just holds it in place also not required because the mount here is being held in by this screw but let's just pop that on there we go screw this down and now we'll download windows 10 i'll show you how to do that and uh put it on a usb stick get this to boot up off of it and uh, we'll go from there all right so to download a copy of windows 10 what you need to do is surf to well you, what you need to do is do a search for Windows 10 Media Creation Tool. There it is. And let's click on that. And don't click Update Now. We want to select Download Tool Now. This will run. Well, it'll finish downloading. Then we'll just click on it to run it. Select Yes. Now this is going to take a minute. I'm going to speed through it so you don't have to sit here and wait. Now here you want to select uh, create installation media and you want to plug a USB stick in. And the other thing you need to note is that this must be running as an administrator. And I don't mean right click run as an administrator. I mean the profile that you're logged in has to be an administrator of the machine. Why right click run as doesn't work? I don't know, but it doesn't. Okay, so uh, it is a 64 bit machine. So uh, we'll leave it at 64 bit. I do want Windows 10, click next. Which, uh, what would you like to push it to? Well, I'd like to push it to a USB drive, thank you. And yeah, I've got one already plugged in. And there we go. Now we're gonna, again, we're gonna speed this up so you don't have to sit here and wait. All right, that took 20 minutes. So let's click finish and you'll notice it doesn't immediately close, which is kind of what you'd expect. There we go. Now let's take it back to the machine, plug it in and boot up. All right, so I've got my stick. Let's jam it into a USB 3 port. And this machine doesn't have a USB 3 port, so I'll jam it into a USB 2 port, which is the only port that I can get. 
There we go. And I will it up. And because the battery's dead, I'm going to have to plug this one in. There we go. I'd like to interject for just 10 seconds and ask you to click like if you found this video useful. Our site is dedicated to explaining technology in simple ways and providing cookbook answers for technical problems. We spend a lot of time on Windows 10 and Windows Server. We spend a lot of time on Azure, Office 365, but mostly our products are about how to's. Lots and lots of cookbooks like how to uninstall something when it's stuck. If you would click subscribe, we would greatly appreciate it. It really helps us with the Google algorithm. Thanks for your help and back to the show. Now let's power this up and let you see what we get. So there's power. That screen is disgusting. I'm going to clean it. Okay, so this is probably, oh, there we go. So, I put a brand new hard drive in, and normally what you'd have to do is go into the BIOS and tell it to boot off of the USB port. However, by default, that's on for most people, and as you saw here, it was on for me. So, it is now booting up. And uh, to make this easier, I'm gonna grab a mouse. This way my hand doesn't get in the way. There we go, next. Install now, so this is Windows 10. And in a moment, it's going to ask, well, what's your license key? And if you don't have it, you can skip past it. And then it's going to say, well, if you don't give me a license key, I don't know what version you've got you're licensed for. Now, in this case, I have Windows 10 Home. Or more specifically, Windows 7 Home is what this machine is licensed for. But the Windows 7 license key will work on Windows uh, 10. There we go. So I don't have a product key. That's important. Do not enter your Windows 7 key yet. Uh, wait until after the machine has come up. So let's choose Windows 10 Home, which is what this machine is. If you have Windows 10 Pro, if, sorry, if you have Windows 7 Pro, then you would choose Windows 10 Pro. Uh, if you have Windows uh, 10, sorry, Windows 7 Starter, Home, Home Basic, or uh, you know, any of the other home versions, make sure you choose Home. So let's choose Home. If you're in Europe, you'd choose the N version, but uh, that's very unlikely. Okay, I accept the license agreement. You know I read that carefully. And I want custom install, and I want to let it rip. I'm gonna speed this up so you don't have to sit and wait. All right, so that took 10 minutes exactly to copy the files, expand them, uh, perform the initial install, reboot, and uh, complete the driver setup. And it's taken another 10 minutes, almost, to go through uh, the balance of the setup to get to this point. We're gonna skip through this as well so you don't have to waste your time. All right, so we've got this going and I see there are some optional updates here. And so I'm going to select them all, as you can see. Select download and install. I want everything updated as much as possible on this thing. All right, so this is going to take probably another half an hour or so. So we'll be back. Okay, so I have patched this. Patch being Windows update only. Nothing specific from Toshiba. Just run the Windows updates and now Let's take a look at how responsive this thing is and what. Uh, let's make sure all the devices are in good play, are in good order. So I just right-clicked and went to Device uh, Manager 
And as you can see, everything installed, there are no bangs. And in particular, the partic particular, in particular, the video card did update to uh, the uh, HD 6310, which is great. Uh, and the uh, video resolution is now clear. Everything is perfectly round. It's not odd shaped. And the system seems quite responsive. So, um, uh, I mean, you're not gonna confuse this with a brand new device, but that is hardly slow, right? This thing is just clicking along quite nicely. So now what I have to do is activate Windows. And uh, so let's do that. So we'll just uh, go here. System. About. Windows 10 Home. Change product key. That takes us to activation. You see it's not activated. And so what I'm going to do is enter, I'm going to put change product key. I'm going to enter the product key on the sticker that's on the bottom of this unit. And I'm obviously going to change it so you can't see it. <laughs> so we'll be back in just a minute. So I've entered the product key and click next. Yay. Now we'll just click activate. Bingo bongo, we're activated. Now I cut these, uh, the, the last two steps down, the one where you enter the number and the uh, time it took to activate because you'll get old waiting for that. They both took several minutes and we don't need to sit there and you know, get frustrated. So you can see, boom, this is now legal. So that's epic. The uh, alert down at the bottom uh, right here saying it needed to be activated is gone, which is great. So now what we're going to do is we are going to download NovaBench and run a quick benchmark. Okay, so there's NovaBench. Uh, now, uh, a couple of things you need to do when you're running a benchmark. One is make sure everything's patched, which we've done. Second is turn off the antivirus. So we're going to uh, go into Defender here, which is an excellent antivirus, by the way, contrary to what a lot of people will tell you. So uh, let's go into Manage Settings, and we'll turn off Real-Time Protection, which turns it off. Yeah, so that's something. Um, and you know, look, we, we know this is going to be slow. This is an 11-year-old laptop. This is not going to be great. Uh, the question is, is it going to be usable? And I think the, just from goofing with it just here, you can see it's going to be usable. <laughs> so uh, let's just take a look here. Yeah, so it's uh, it's working away here. Everything looks looks pretty much okay. So what we're going to do is wait for this CPU to settle down. We're going to wait for this uh, compatibility telemetry to go away because it's not fair to do a, a benchmark with that running. And once that settles down, we'll do our test. Okay, so after a few minutes, the telemetry died down and you can see really what's actually using CPU now is Task Manager. So we're gonna get rid of Task Manager. There it goes. Now let's run the benchmark. Now we'll run this three times. I won't bore you uh, with having to watch this. We'll speed it up drastically. All right, so let's take a look. Basically a score of 320 is just god awful. But uh, that doesn't mean it's not usable. So CPU score is really bad, but still functional. The disk score is really the most disappointing. And the reason it's so low, even though it's got a solid state drive in there, is because the, the, uh, the disk controller on this is a SATA 2 controller, not a SATA 3. And you think, I don't know what that means. Well, what it means is, can it transfer at um, 3 gig a second? Or can it transfer at 6 gig a second? So if this had a newer controller, it would operate at at least twice that speed. The SSD is still worthwhile because an 11 year old spinning disc is going to be very prone to failure. So you're gonna to have to change it with something and changing it with a spinning disc doesn't make any sense when you can get an SSD for 50 bucks. BU score is pretty bad. Yeah, but you know, it's the, the point with this is that it's functional. So uh, let's just go here and I'll just show you. We'll try to surf somewhere. Yeah, there it goes. So nobody's going to uh, confuse this with a screamer, but they are going to uh, know that it's usable. So uh, this would be good for uh, a kid in elementary school or, you know, a grandparent that needs to check their mail or, you know, that kind of stuff. It's not, uh, it's, not good, it's not going to be good enough for somebody who wants to play games. It's not going to be somebody, good enough for somebody that wants to do heavy work on it. 
but basic stuff, it's just ideal. All right, if you like this video, please click like uh, and potentially subscribe. We really would appreciate it. It's very helpful uh, with Google algorithms. And if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. We'll get back to you. And you can always get a hold of us at www.urtech.ca. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.